Testing, one, two, three, uh, units are missing. Testing. So you got up just as I clicked on the button because you wanted to be part of the show. Oh, now you're going to settle down. Hi, folks. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me bring that up a little tiny bit. Uh, Miss Milky the Clown posted Terminal, he stormed the stage in Ontario. I only caught the first two minutes of it. I wasn't sure if he was giving a speech or what was going on, but he got up on that stage for like 10 minutes and had his say about Fukushima. Pretty cool. Uh, people call him names, of course, stuff like that. But uh, he brought it He brought it to him, right? Hang on one second. He brought it to him. Then the police came. But uh, Terminal's good. So that's a really good, I gotta go watch that after and put the headphones on and hear what he's saying. It's lost in translation. Well, I'm gonna put up a puppy because she's wondering not much we can do. Um, hi, Starlight. Hi, Sylvia. Char. Kurtzer K. Loy Ranovril. Ah, ah, yeah. Yeah, not too shabby, huh? Ah, what? Not too, not too bad. Let me see what else we got going on here. The comments are not showing up yet. They'll show up in a little tiny bit. They'll show up in a little tiny bit. Yeah. I'll double check down here. Yeah, there's more on this. Hi, Miss Frill. Janet. Hi, folks. Missing Sky. Uh, Jester. That's a bit better. It'll pop back up on this computer in a second. Same with this one here. I, I know I haven't got all the comments in front of me yet. It takes a few minutes for it to wind up. It takes a few minutes. Here we go. Vroom, 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 vroom. I'll just make sounds for everybody. How about that? I'm missing Sky. Navigator. Av Eight. Now where's that window? Hang on here. Let me get rid, let me get rid of that. Enough plugs. I got enough plugs to make anybody happy. Jeff Bezos can save the world. And he's got lots of money, but we can help, right? We'll help him because all these, uh, he needs to be uh, build bigger ones. But you can use that technology and that concept and that idea to save all of these customers' lives from the death plumes, from the death streams, the jet streams, death streams that are coming across the ocean in three days from Japan for the last thousand days. And there's a link below to a Canadian study uh, from March the 20th, 2011, and they found they were flying at 750 feet height and they were going right through a plume which meant it was like a snowstorm coming into Canada. The entire length of Vancouver Island on the west coast and that link is below it's a 17 page PDF file if you go to click that link folks. Um, and so what that means is uh, more of these death plumes and also from the ocean from the clouds picking up because the Pacific Ocean there's a link below to that one a peer review academic study about a two week dispersal into the Pacific Ocean from Japan that was admitted to originally excuse me and that doesn't include the uh, 400 tons a day that's emitted that's hemorrhaging into the ocean and it only includes cesium-137 doesn't include plutonium strontium and the uranium's 234, 235's, and also there's a lot of yellow cake on that site, which is the 238, and then it has uh, am aminorinium, and it has uh, the potential to be extraordinarily toxic, and so that stuff is was lugged away too, um, and each of the pools had around 122,000 rods in them, folks. And there was probably three pools on each of the missing reactors' buildings. And I'll bring up a picture for folks so they can get an idea. So on top of that, 
there was three pools and they were full of 122 roughly thousand rods each around 1500 per pool and 35 uh, bundles and each bundle uh, the estimates are 60 to 80 and I think 80 is actually about right and they were 12 foot long with 80 rods and each rod is made out of allegedly just plutonium and uranium which is the most unimaginably dangerous things on the planet earth and a few pounds of plutonium uh, can kill everybody kill all the mammals on the planet after it kills all the humans just a few pounds and there's hundreds of thousands of pounds missing from the pools the spent pool uh, fuel pools on the roof because once you take the rods out of the reactor they, they continue to stay hot and they have to stay underwater for a long <laughs> well some of these rods have been there for 25 years and they have been damaged and on October 25th, 2013, last month, or the month before, uh, was a 7.3 earthquake. Ten days before that was a, on the 15th of October, was a 7.3 earthquake in Boho, Philippines, which doesn't exist anymore. But uh, we have, uh, there was 100,000 houses knocked down in that earthquake. But Japan is saying nothing happened to it. And we're worried more rods, which are on the edges there because of the explosion and detonations from the hydrogen buildup when the zirconian and the rods uh, lost uh, their, lost their uh, support, which was uh, hard water because the, the tanks are filled of, of this hard water which is meant to try to contain some of the radiation and to lubricate the rods, particularly the zirconian, can't be put into the air and it becomes, um, it catches fire. But the fumes released from it are extraordinarily uh, volatile. It's so like Jack Cousteau, uh, when they were experimenting with diving, they were purging their suits at 70 feet uh, with air, with pure oxygen. And what happened was um, static electricity from the dry suits would cause the divers to blow up because it was highly volatile. And when you're in the hyperbaric chambers, you can't, you're not supposed to have books or flammable stuff in there uh, because of the static electricity from deck could cause an explosion because of the oxygen that you're usually breathing and the mixtures becomes very, so you can have a, and if you think about how vapors work, they, it's a, it can create a huge explosion. I was on a... Um, I've seen boats that have blown up from uh, propane vapors where every windle is taken out of the boat and every hatch is knocked off the boat. Uh, just to give you kind of an idea, so I went down that path just to try to explain to you in some background, some history, that there's three reactors missing and each one of them were bigger than the Chernobyl reactors and Chernobyl was one-third the size of a reactor as Fukushima's smallest reactor and that Chernobyl was a 30 percent partial meltdown you removed rods whereas Fukushima was 100 percent meltdown and nobody knows where the rods are certainly and that these buildings exploded like firecrackers and the rods that were on the roof were turned into projectiles that were blasted up to two miles away chunks of them because these were massive uh, concussion explosions. And that created a very toxic environment where, if you look at the documentary I had below my video about Chernobyl's 3828, for the first number of days, they can only spend 20 to 30 seconds at best, 15 to 20 seconds, where there was 12 men would run out for 15 or 20 seconds and then they were finished. They could never work on a nuclear radiation site again after 15 or 20 seconds. And the Kyusus in Japan, with the help of the Tepico, uh government and the help of the Japanese military, are allowing the mob to jack people off the street and bring them in there, not for 15 or 20 seconds, but for days and weeks, um, with no accountability. And these victims are going to get the most horrendous doses imaginable. And they're going to be a burden to their community and, you know, their families and everybody else because nobody really knows what's going on. And these are the most uh, important people on the planet. These are the heroes. And they don't know it. Not only that, we don't know it. And we have no record of these heroes because these are true heroes. 
uh, no mortal man is going to man up to go do that job without the oversight of knowledge uh, on their side. And that's not happening for the victims that are doing the jobs there. These are victims. These are not, nobody is running down and big smile on their face when they get home. Ma, I just got a job at Fukushima Prefecture. Woo, pension and everything. Right? That's not happening. Nobody's lining up for jobs. It's not like the 7,000 I showed up for McDonald's jobs. Nobody's showing up for these jobs because they know that there is no oversight there whatsoever and that people are just being abused, used, and discharged. Uh, and they deserve the recognition. And not only that, that country deserves to be free. It's been under martial law for... Uh, since the October 25th, 2013, 7.3 earthquake, when they closed down the internet, one one thousandth of one percent is on the net of Japan, and we think they are from outside of Japan, and the DRPR firms. In fact, we're pretty sure of that. There is no traffic whatsoever. There's, there doesn't seem to be any conference going on. And the state of secrecy laws that have been implemented is uh, not is not um, it's not becoming of a democratic democracy. And that Japan has turned tyrannical. Instead of letting in the international community to help, they're Shanghai and the most vulnerable in society off the streets. And that's murder, uh, no matter how you try to paint it. So the international community also has to be terrorized at this stage of the Philippines event. That was an event. Uh, it was a hundred mile wide F4 tornadoes when tornadoes are usually a quarter mile wide. Extraordinary ones might be a half mile wide and extraordinarily might travel for six miles. And we made the leap to a hundred miles wide and traveling for hundreds of miles and reckon 7,000 islands in an archipelago where people still haven't been reached and where the victims are saying that what's the sense of rebuilding if this is what global warming is going to do, not understanding, not having any concept that this is the direct result of a massive amount of release of radioactive materials into the ocean from three melted reactors, from just a history, but this is so urgent now. This is so deadly. So we, it's time to settle down, sweetie. Settle down. Okay, settle down. Lay down. You're good. Wait there. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, good dog. Oh, you're some good dog. You are. Dana's little dog. You are. So we have all these victims, uh, and the graveyards are turning into toxic dumps and they're radioactive. These are uh, walking dirty bombs wherever they go, wherever they're showering. These victims are suffering unimaginably to the very bitter end and then they're contaminating everything around them at that point on top of that. The seagulls are literally dirty bombs coming out of the back of them. And in Sellafield, England, they would shoot the seagulls when they land. They still do, of course. There's 8 million liters a day going into the ocean there. And we think Jeff Bezos, Amazon.com, is a fantastic opportunity to deal with a radiated ocean that is creating thousands of miles of clouds. And so the drones can go out and cut through the clouds and shear them off and drop that radioactivity back into the earth into the ocean. At the same time, we have to put 4,200 peer review academic studies to come up with solutions that we can go out and implement on that ocean to try to neutralize its abilities. But we're talking about pure energy. We're talking about an ocean that is actually a, a big battery. And we're talking about toxins that are so hideous all day, every day, non-stop hemorrhaging into the ocean, 1,440 minutes a day. There's millions of gallons running underneath that plant. And it has to be that way. It couldn't be on the site because of the heat that's generated. 
window left exposed because of the fusion. They can turn on and off, uh, but there's still a massive amount of heat even when they're in that what, what, what we might describe as an off mode. But the temperatures have been recorded at 9,000 degrees, which is a st you know hotter than the sun. And that atomized all the rods that are falling off the edges every time there's an earthquake. And so what they done was they built a shelter over that, but they can never get in there and work on that for 100 years. You won't see construction equipment, you won't see welders out there or people with torches, you won't see the proverbial engineers with their gear sizing up what they're going to do, because you can't touch it like Chernobyl. You're supposed to put a sarcophagus over it for... Uh, 100 years and wait for the radiation to come down by 10. Uh, that can't be done right now because the site is hemorrhaging so much. It's not like Chernobyl where you had a partial meltdown of 30%. You have three melted reactors. One of them is MOX fuel. MOX fuel is 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet because they're using weaponized isotopes that we don't need. See, it's not about... They say MOX fuel for making power... But if you actually go look at that, that's not what MOX fuel obviously is not for that. It's two million times more powerful than any other reactor. Two, two million times more deadly. It's like two million, it's like 18 million Chernobyls. Because Chernobyl was nothing compared to just the Unit 3 at Fukushima. And so we need people like, uh, who are, you know, Jeffrey Preston Jorgensen, a.k.a. Jeff... Bezos, and his maternal grandfather was the regional director, director, right, okay, Zoe, director of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, in Albuquerque, right? And as a toddler, uh, Jeff had tried to dismantle these cribs, so he always figured he was going to be mechanically something else. So he settled down, sweetie. Settle down. Settle down. Get up and lay down for a while. Hang on, folks. Get up and lie down. Hop, 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 hop. Yeah, like she's going to listen to me. She knows you're all watching, see? She always gets nervous when there's people watching. Unlike Dana. So Jeff's uh, maternal grandfather was the regional director of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. How ironic is that? That he can now come in and take his grandfather's legacy and save this planet save all the victims in the Asian country who have no idea. There's only 2 billion people connected to the Internet, see? And someday Jeff might want to use that as, as uh, do drone sir, uh, deliveries over there. Of course, everybody's saying, oh, you know, people are going to be out there shooting the drones, knocking them out of the sky and getting some surprise packages. But they probably got a big brother there going to show up. Another drone will show up and tase you if he does that. Or mark you with DNA dye or who knows what. But Jeff has, stands the possibility the Amazon.com could save the world. Because right now it looks like we're in a whole lot of trouble real soon. Because I got a thousand days of hemorrhaging into the Pacific Ocean at a rate that is unsustainable for a week. But has went on for a thousand days. All day, every day. It's nonstop. The whole site, you know, Japan itself is polluted. It's a toxic wasteland. You need to take every building in Japan, every building in the Philippines, every building in the coastline of British Columbia, every building along California, and put them on a toxic waste site or Japan. We shouldn't ship everything to Japan. But we can't. we got to save the ocean on top of everything else, save it from destroying the planet, from creating not only 195 mile an hour typhoons that we've seen there were 100 mile wide F4 tornadoes, which should only be on Mars, that are going to get much stronger. And soon, any day, you, you can expect that to happen again. It happened once, and this is typhoon season on top of that, and cyclone season is just, you know, that'll be happening over there. It's going to come over here. And it's not just that it's going to come over here, it's that it's just going to get worse. It's going to get much worse. It's not going to get ever get better, ever, if we don't do something. And Jeff could get out there and stop these typhoons from forming uh, by getting the 4200. He can help us get 4200 peer review academic studies that we normally lock up at Ellsworth, Springers, and Wiley's Ivory Towers every day. 
and get the 4,200 universities that our tax money paid for, that your children produce, that you pay for the heat, you pay for the lights, you pay for all the equipment, you pay all that money for your universities and institutions to produce these peer review studies, and a handful, a small handful, a, ton, a true handful of corporations gets the copyrights to and locks it all out. It's not very cool, I know. But if we could switch that, and then Jeff was to take all of his drones and get out there and start creating chemtrails to create particles because the gammas, the betas, and the alphas, all this radiation is energy, right? And it aggregates particulates. And so somewhere in those 4,200 peer review studies is the particulates, well, your own government, all countries, backup plan for... Uh, the death streams, the death plumes, the radiation fallout is in their countries is to get up a plane, spray particulates that will aggregate with the radiation and bring it down. But they're supposed to lock you up in your home if they're doing that over your communities, right? And so they haven't done that for the last thousand days to for anybody. But the link below uh, shows that the Canadian government flew the entire coastline and found massive plumes in an 18-hour period and... That's just, uh, it's it's just more proof, you know. You got Patrick Henney down below. He, in my link below, you'll find Patrick's uh, site. And he'll link you over to the Plume Gate. And so there's just endless, it's kind of like, um, you know, all these, where all the emails gets taken by Freedom of Information from AP and other big sources. And then that's put up on the internet. And if you go through that, there's millions of them. You can find all kinds of, that they knew. I mean, there's no secret. If you go to E&E &E News and you read all day long, just the headlines and the paragraph, all day long, just keep clicking away. The whole thing is all links, full sentences for the links. And they link you directly to the mainstream media with those stories. You go and read that all day, you're good to go. You're good to go. Just whatever ones you, you like, open them up another tab, but keep going and then start reading them for five or six hours. And you'll actually get a really good picture because it's not like media hasn't reported on this, but they don't go back and refer to it. They just say the story and then they move on. They never come back and bring it into context with other stories. But there was this and this and there was trillions of Beckwells in the first four days of plutonium that was already recorded. And that would mean there's trillions of Beckwells of strontium and trillions of Beckwells also, see, of uranium. And there's trillions of Beckwells of the cesium per second disintegrations every second and every minute the 1440 minutes in a day every day the 30 days in a month every year is these trillions and trillions and trillions just from a four-day release just from four days and that was plutonium and so you find all these tibets that are well known and you can actually paint a true picture of what's really going on there. And that's what we have done on this site many times. But, I mean, the fact that Bezos' maternal, Jeff Bezos, Amazon.com's maternal grandfather was the regional director of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission in Albuquerque, right? Amazon.com can carry on his maternal grandfather's legacy because that's what he was trying to do, right? He's trying to save the planet. And so Bezos, you know, he kind of kind of owes it to his grandfather to build a fleet of drones to get out there and chemtrail the ocean with these particulates that will aggregate with the radiation and drop it back down in the ocean. And then we need, we can flip all the military drones over and they can fly through the clouds on the ocean the thousands of miles that are formed every day that are full of radioactive material, knock them back down into the ocean. Yeah, stop it from getting out in the troposphere and the stratosphere. And that's some of the ways we can mitigate it. Well, we've got 4,200 peer review academic studies every day about how we're going to deal with that and, and what kind of nutrition and how to engineer nutrition in the GMO instead of out of the GMO. Ah, yeah, pretty sneaky, eh? We could do stuff like that as an, as an act of good faith to humanity that we're trying to deal with it while we're waiting, right? Monsanto and the biotech, I'm not going to say it, companies, because what they're doing right now is you got all all the all the nutrition in engineered out 
of the seven staples that are grown GMO. There's a lot more in there, but the seven staples that we find on 85% of your supermarket shelves and all your pastry and all your cookies and all your treats and all your food, anything you buy in the supermarket that looks like you should take a picture of it in the fruit section or the vegetable section, that's GMO, right? Organic food never looked like that. Maybe one in the entire field might look like that. And that's probably what they would have done was took a picture of it. But everything else would have had insects at it. And it's okay because you chopped that out. That's what you've always done through since the beginning of time is you chopped that out. Not a big deal. Besides, it's got nutrition. And it don't have the formaldehydes and the glyphosates engineered into it. Right? So we can engineer the glyphosates and formaldehyde out of GMO foods from now on. That would be a big help. And engineer toxin, um, nutrition in there. Right? Let's put some more calcium in there. Let's put more potassium in it. Let's put more magnesium in it. More iron. What do you say? Hey, good idea? That'd be pretty cool. Then we wouldn't have to all go out and scrounge trying to get our hands on organic. And we can have a basic normal society because we're healthy. We can fight off some of this affection. And then we can just go ahead, like the link below, talks about how DCA has been peer-reviewed five, five times in the last decade. That link below has been peer-reviewed. Dr. Inna, Mickey Anno, I can't even pronounce his name, has been peer-reviewed five times that DCA reduces all tumors by 70%. See? And so, yes, you still got to fear the radiation. Yes, you can't get away from the radiation. Yes, the radiation is going to to just land everywhere and get absorbed into your plate. You have to get away from it, from, from the heavy stuff, which is close to the Pacific Ocean. The entire Pacific Rim, every country on it has to bail, right? And not, not, to, not the day after the world, but the moral. We need an organized withdrawal from the Pacific Ocean that will bring the urgency because this is truly a meteorite coming at our planet, an extinction level event for about at least 95% of the species. And whatever's left over is going to be acclimated to radiation because they're not going to escape it either. It's not like there's going to be a 5% of the planet that's going to be able to escape this creature that we have unleashed up on this planet that is not indigenous to this planet. So there's nothing on this planet has a natural defense for it. There is no defense for it. But you can manage it. You can manage the, uh, the, what's going on with yourself by being healthy, by being nutritionally enriched on your body, by having lots of oxygen in your body, by making conscious decisions to get out of the way of the death plumes and the death stream itself. I mean, the jet streams, right? So you want to avoid the jet streams. You want to avoid the Pacific. And the way that mixes with the other oceans, it doesn't quite pour straight into each ocean, thank goodness. Each ocean has natural, not barriers, because it's ocean against ocean, but it's different temperatures. And so it's a very slow release compared to what it would be if the oceans weren't joined uh, would just spill into each other, we're just one, right? Because what happens is there's actual currents that kick back into each other, into each ocean, at these points that are known as the equators. And they have their own. And so that kind of mixing where there's different temperatures and different salinity is in your favor. And so your most immediate problem is getting away from the Pacific Ocean and then getting away from being underneath the jet streams, death streams that are coming over from Japan, uh, since the beginning of time, but in particular for the last thousand days, because as we see in the study below, the Canadian government had went out and found massive plumes at 750 feet right along the entire coastline, and that southwestern Canada got hammered with some massive numbers of cesium-137. But they weren't looking for the plutonium, they weren't looking for the strontium, they weren't looking for the entire family trees of them or the uranium with a half-life of a billion years. So the land can never be uncontaminated. You're supposed to remove all the topsoil in British Columbia and the Philippines and Japan and Vietnam and Alaska and the entire coastline of the United States and put that on a nuclear waste site in sarcophagus so the isotopes don't keep hemorrhaging out onto the planet. But you got an ocean that's doing that. And there's so much into it. Every day, it's nonstop cascading of three melted cores. This is not like Chernobyl, where it was one-third the size, where it didn't have the fuel pools that are above it missing, 
where uh, they were able to extract the rods uh, and only had a partial 30% meltdown and they got it under control to an extent, right? So they got some of that still melted there. They can't get near it. But it's not like Fukushima where it's right on the ocean. It's just, ooh, straight out into the ocean. And we have went over all these numbers. There's no need for proof, but you should go over the, the news. And then I have all the people below it that will give you different perspectives on everything I'm saying to you. So you can have it coming from a different narrative. That's so important that you get it from... And you listen to the stuff you don't want to listen to so you can have those narratives to work with so you can understand where the fights and the divides and what's nonsense and what's legit that way because you can't unless you look at it and you go and read all those peer review studies because what is more important? Is it uh, ignoring this for a couple of years until one of those typhoons at four and 500 miles an hour whacks Vancouver or takes out California and there's dead politicians and celebrities at that point, they'll get it, and that'll be panic, see? So we need to come out now. We need to push back now. And I uh, I was laughing the day at a friend of mine who said uh, that people should take out an ad in their community if they wanted to donate to my site. You take out an ad in the community and catch the live show seven nights a week at this link. Have some fun. Here's some serious stuff. Be abused. You know, so they can approach it different ways with some humor. And I thought that was pretty cute because there is a lot of free papers in communities. And that, that would be an interesting thing to do if I could figure out how to import people into the streams. <laughs> Which is, I guess I'm going to have to get myself on that regardless. Because that's the thing I need to do is start bringing more people into this stream. So we can chat. So I, can, I should be able to bring in four or five people. Uh, that would be a lot to control and try to listen to, you know, control all the functions, but it's doable because I got the features. It's just, it took 23 tries just to get this thing to work properly on YouTube. What's it going to take for people trying to work their way through it so they can get on the stream with me? Like, because you got to go through the same stuff I did. I can make it easy, but it's an, it's an intriguing thought because what other, you know, it's not like that's the end all to everything else, but it sure could change the game if we if we went about it another way uh, there's other ways to do it but you got to pay a lot of money and then the bigger the stream the more you got to pay so the more people watches you the more they can ding you for and then bandwidth is a fortune if you get a big number on a stream so if you were to have a million people jump on the stream it would be a fortune right here it costs nothing right so if I can work out how to do it on this it could be a good thing uh, it's going to have to be low bandwidth for the people that are streaming so they don't get broken streams because we got that worked out all right, see? And so I can teach people how to do that before they get on the stream. But it's still, a lot of people won't be able to pull it off. and That's okay. But if, if we can get people like Jeff Bezos, right, to flip and say, you know, money's no good once I come out of the, the bunker and there's nobody left... My drones are no good. My business can't make any money because everybody got pulled away and destroyed like they did in the Philippines. That's common to his neighborhood and your neighborhood and my neighborhood if we don't get it together. The Philippines is the absolute proof of that. This is very real and very present danger to all the species on the planet. You can't escape it. It's not going away. They want to tell you about 30-year half-lives for cesium-137 and ignore the uranium with a couple of billion years half-life, that'll kill you much quicker, much harder, much more potent cancers, much more horrendous results. And not to mention the plutonium, not to mention the weaponized isotopes that they had at those facilities. There's 1,300 that are long-life isotopes. They've had a, they had a few thousand there, but uh, there's 3,000 altogether or something that they admit to. But think about all the other countries and their isotopes, and then think about what they use in the wars. Think about what they already dumped in the ocean. Think about how every nuclear plant has secretly built pipes out into the ocean and discharge it, because if not, then they discharge it in the community and might kill a bunch of people. And that's bad for nuclear power. And so right now they're trying to hide this, because they think something magically is going to happen, that this is going to go away, a dead Pacific Ocean. 
because that's what we got here, folks, in less than two years. You can't avoid it because a thousand miles of cloud are picking it up and bringing it all over the Pacific and the coastlines. And the evidence is so overwhelming that I hate talking about it anymore. I just want to talk about how do we get started on getting every university on this planet producing 4,200 peer review academic studies to get that meteorite that already struck Earth and deal with the after effect and the continuing effect of a meteorite every day smacking into this planet from Fukushima's. In, um, it's so bad that if we don't do something soon, we're going to lose the site and not be able to get back on that site. they got to release all the water and all those tanks at some point, whether through an earthquake. If that happens, they're not going to get back on that site. If that happens, all that heavy metal in the bottom of those containers, if they spill, then that metal becomes fusion, becomes fission, becomes a nuclear reaction, an unhinged nuclear reaction just in the tank. And that's what they believe happened down in Hanford, just down the road from us, uh, in some of their tanks. They, they dumped 2 billion gallons directly into the soil. And they were firing 5.5 million bullets a month, right, in uh, Iraq. Go look it up, and you'll find the DOJ site. Well, half of that was uh, dirty bombs, depleted uranium rounds. The Warthog only shoots depleted uranium, which has a half-life of a couple of billion. And depleted is, is only meant... It's 99.8% of the yellow cake is left over and 2% is used for weaponized. So they create all this yellow cake and they got a billion tons of it. And what they do is make bullets out of it. McAllister in McAllister, Oklahoma, all they make is depleted uranium munitions. 20 train cars a day, every day is rolling out of that factory on a slow boat to Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia and everywhere else. And the, every one of those bullets is a dirty bomb. Period. It'll contaminate that land, water, fields, homes, hospitals, schools. Because the Americans are shooting in and everything over there. Everybody's homes. Everybody's buildings. They're shooting up. And this is only meant for hardened targets. But they're shooting up. Every community in Iraq and Afghanistan has been hammered with depleted uranium. Every garden, every house, every playground, every water, well, everything. Every piece of land, farmland. Everything has been hammered with depleted uranium. And that's because they don't have nuclear power over there and they can't just blow up one of those places and contaminate it. So they went in there and went to war and destroyed it. And uh, this is eugenics on this planet. Whether you want to accept that or not, you'd be pretty naive not to if you actually looked into it. Even a little bit, you would understand what I say is true. Same as the GMO is eugenics against the planet. And by denying everybody the nutrition in their food, by giving them this pretty looking food, but it has no nutrition into it. That's engineered out. There's the peer review studies out there for it. And so what we got to do is we got to really find a way to push back. Kevin, Kevin Blanche and uh, Thomas Ackerman, H. Thomas Ackerman, their links are below. They're, they created a portfolio for people who, and you can call them, go and see Kevin or... Um, Ackerman's last video. And he's got a video there where you can call him, call his number, just call his house or email him, and he'll send you a copy, and you can bring it down to your local museum about Fukushima, art for Fukushima, see? And that's a brilliant, brilliant idea. It's brilliant. Because I, I don't know how many times over the years I've seen things that wouldn't come out into the media finally come out through art. And this is a big one. See, they don't want this one to come out there because they're terrified that people are not going to pay the bills and are going to go on the looting spree and blah, 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 blah. And so are we. But we, we need an informed, educated population, voice raising and the concern that can jack this planet. It's no different than having a meteorite and somebody spots it, tells the world, and everybody laughs at them, and a month later, everybody else at the one time sees it. And then the whole world gets busy on it to create... Humanity's last stand should be a stand. Humanity's, humanity's last stand should never be everybody sitting home watching TV or Netflix and everything else, surfing the net, never understanding, and never having the option. Like the Canadian government left uh, British Columbia high and dry on March the 20th, and that link below, where they went out and found the plumes during that morning when white kids were going to school. And they never warned the population to keep your kids home. They just let them walk through those death plumes. 
and the numbers are dear, and that just came out a few days ago. And so, our, you know, our governments have turned their backs on us. They turned their backs on us. That was the opportunity right there. They were supposed to. Remember what they were teaching in schools in the 40, 50, duck and cover, right? They indoctrinated the children beyond imagination. And, uh, like, there's minimum 10 Hiroshima's bombs worth of radiation every day going into that ocean that we can, that they emit to, that the physicists have worked out. But there's much more going underneath it over the melted cores. And I just talked for how long? I'm sorry. Got to watch me. I'm pretty tricky sometimes. Uh, I just talked for 40 minutes. Not bad. Hi, freelance. I check some balances. You're free in isotopes when you're shoveling snow. The real night writer. Janet. Yeah, they don't know what to do. Hi, Uber Magic. Uh, chair. I start talking, but I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. I just keeps talking and talking and talking. I even do that when the camera's off. I just sit here and I go and I go and I go. It's unreal. Zoe likes it, though. My puppy likes it. My neighbor's wondering what I'm talking about, but it's okay. I'm in the therapy and the yoga. I'm moving. Hi, uh, hi, Sylvia. Bum, bum, bum. Hi, Christopher Taylor. <laughs> yeah, I hear that one. Let me go down. Uh, Papa Chart two twenty six forty three. We got Albert Swartz. Hi, folks. Hi, Kurt K. Robert Nuber Magic in person. Oh, I lost it. Hang on. Ba ba ba. What have we got here? I hate him. Like I, the last comment. Sometimes I don't get the name of whoever put the comment there. So I can't figure out what anybody's saying. Uh, oh, Sergeant York. I'll start over for you. Yeah. Hang on, I'll come down and say hi. I don't know what's going on. I lost track. Bit of a burnout tonight, I guess. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Cucumber. Uh... Oh, we're hobbyists. Okay, Nubro. Gotcha. Roger that. I don't know. I know, Lunar. Dwayne Campbell. Well, I'm trying to catch up. Starlight. Lyrinial. Robert. Uh, ha ha. Missing Sky. Catcher K again. I say hi to Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Ay, ay, ay. I'm just scrolling down. Corey Graham. I'm probably missing dozens of people, I know. I'm trying here. Hang on. Bump, bump. No, no GMOs. Here's Zoe. Come see Dana. Come here. What are you doing? You gonna come and see Dana? Come and see Dana. Everyone say hi to you. Here's Zoe. Dives under the desk. Well, what should I talk about, folks? Anything? Anything anybody want me to talk about? Discombobulated 101. Definition of the Japanese government. Bunch of melgomaniac. Uh, it's a bunch of inbreeds, right? From fucking sheep all the time or something. And then anything that survived it looked like a human. They raised it up and put it in charge of the government. 
That's probably how the Japanese government came about. They took a big load of shit in this hand, a big load of shit in that like that. And anything survived that, started crawling, finally stood up on his hind heels. They put a suit on it, right? And then he put it in the chair and they give him a check every week as long as he don't pee over everything. Hi, dog. That's, that's typical Japanese TEPCO employee. Um, most of them, their first jobs were fluffers for porno movies. They were so good they got a job with a suit on for a change. That's pretty twisted, Dina. Oh, I know. 45 minutes. Give some questions. Come on. Let's hear something. Ask me something. I'm not going to say nothing until somebody asks me something. Bum, 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 Weather and radiation. Rain is going to knock it out of the sky. Snow is going to knock it out of the sky. Hurricanes are going to pick it up and lay it back down again and liberate it. Which reactor is in the picture? Is that reactor three? I get lost sometimes. I got to bring up the picture first. Hang on. I think three is up there. Uh, so buying it the best way or no? So is buying it the best way? Is buying what? A dandelion? Elizabeth? That's what you're talking about? I'm watching. Let me know. Newber Magic got a few new videos up. Uh, Miss Milky got a great one up there right now. Uh, trying to find a question. Trying to find a question. Well, so is burying it the best way? No, it's supposed to be put in the sarcophagus, right? All that stuff on the site is supposed to be put in the sarcophagus. You can't bury it because it goes back into the water tables and leaches out. And if you have some kind of event or anything like that, it it can be, you can't just can't put it in, it's not supposed to be ever, anywhere on this planet. You're not supposed to find an isotope anywhere, see? They knew that, that was part of the agreement when they started doing the nuclear thing. They were going to lock it all up in uh, sarcophaguses for future generations to try to figure out, all right? Miserable fuckers, boy. They're still alive. They should be hanging, swinging from poles. They will be, as people wake up and find out what they got done. Yeah, that could be Reactor 4, Freelance. You probably know better than I do. You got a good collection. Hi, Starlight. So, a vacuum cleaner. What are the top three things that need to be done now? Elizabeth says, as that can be done now as a start. Well, like I said last night, I gotta make a video so everybody can learn how to make a hangman's knot and they get that translated into a bunch of languages. To me, that's one of the best things we should do, just in case the other two don't work out. And then number two would be we uh, we would identify a meteorite named Fukushima, and then all the universities on the planets would take it from there. We can all go back to the beer. Uh, no, that was my reading. You had it typed right. I wasn't paying. You see me adjust my glasses? That's because I need new ones. <laughs> so it's not very good. But if we... Um, we need we need the media... Not the media. Sorry, I'll take that one back. You know, that's, that's, that's something else in it, right? How do you get uh, every university on this planet to go to work on solving Fukushima and the oceans and the environment and the future without panicking the entire planet at the same time because the media is incompetent. And this is like a wet dream for them. They can't touch it, see? Thank goodness. Lucky for us. Well, I mean, they won't even have a job if this breaks. Anyway, people are going to turn them off. They're going to hate them. People are going to despise them. And so there's nothing we can do about that. I'd like to fix that because it'd be great if the media actually was able to do what it was supposed to do. 
But uh, that's what we need to do. We we need to, right. There is no solution. You can't turn this off, right? What they got done there, they won't even tell you what the thirteen hundred isotopes they're using is. They tell you it's two million times more deadly than any other reactor on the planet, and then try to tell you that that's plutonium and strontium that's doing all, or um, uranium that's doing that. And it's not. It's this laser where they use these weaponized lasers to enhance it in such a way that who knows what happens, uh, 100%. But uh, it's really bad because, yeah, reactor four, the spent fuel went dry twice, right? Burnt, it burnt twice, that's a minute. Right after the accident, within a couple of months, that was a minute a number of times. Those headlines are all over ENE News, you'll find that stuff. Uh, that the pool did go dry because hundreds of millions of tons got picked up in that earthquake and broke its back. That's why they perpetually have to pour water in on top of it. You can't get underneath it and plug it because it'll kill you. You can't even get in there because there's rods everywhere, right? It had a detonation there, a nuclear detonation in number four. Do you know that allegedly by the isotopes that came out of it? They were found in uh, California's rain seven days later that they lied about and there's this uh, organized, systematic system after that lies. That all it does is lie. Look at the Guardian yesterday. Can you imagine? They equated Fukushima radiation with background radiation of water. They didn't use potatoes because they knew I'd come out and tear into them for that one. And they didn't use the airplanes because they knew I'd tear them apart for that too. So they came up with a new one that I haven't used before. is water. So I'll be using that in my examples from now on because Fukushima radiation, you'd have to drink an ocean of water from freshwater background radiation, still wouldn't kill you. Fukushima, if you had a glass of it, it'd kill everybody in the restaurant so have an hour, every hour, till the end of time for billions of years. That's how deadly that stuff is. It just does not stop. It doesn't stop. If you put an isotope here, it doesn't fucking stop for a billion years pumping out isotopes or radiation. It doesn't stop. It'll radiate everything till the end of time. You can put a conveyor belt alongside of some of these isotopes and everything that's running past it will get radiated. Some of those isotopes are unbelievable. But when you're talking about what's actually fell down on the site, right, the x-rays and the Rankins that are there, these high numbers, where 200 Rankins uh, will kill you. Uh, there's, there's chunk, those chunks out there are 8 and 12,000 Rankins just out of a Chernobyl. That's not Max Fuel, okay? Max Fuel is 2 million times plus 9. So 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. Just number 3 reactor. It's a very frightening thing. Hi, Christopher. Do I think history repeats itself? Used to. Well, right now it's repeating itself for the last 50 years. You keep putting the isotopes out there, the radiation out there, the, the munitions out there. They keep throwing 45 gallon drums out there for the last 50 years. And for them, yeah, history has repeated itself because they have tried to deal with it themselves to hide it. And so they got a long history of doing this, but they can't hide a dead Pacific anymore. We never had a dead Pacific, so there's no history right, for a dead Pacific, and there's no history for 100-mile-wide 100 100 F4 tornadoes. The biggest they ever got before was a quarter mile, and the first they went was six miles, now they're going hundreds of miles, rather, and they're 100 mile wide eye at 235 mile an hour gust. So I know that's not the question you asked me, but that's the, that's the answer, because that's, that's history we've never seen before. Nubaru says, will be Jerry is, he's talking to somebody, I guess. Who are you talking to, Willis? Lunar, Lee John, good question, Mark T. I'm going to go find that one. Hi, Mark. I seen your comment earlier, thank you. Does high-powered magnetism do anything to radiation? Okay, let's pretend radiation was uh, in the heavy metal. 
So you had heavy metal with the radiation in it. And so you can stick that on a magnet, for instance, right? It's still going to, it's going to turn that magnet into a radiated magnet. And then it's going to still keep pumping out that radiation for a billion years. You can't neutralize it, see? If they could neutralize it, they would have done it 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 9, 10, 8. You know, they would have done it 12. They would have done it to Hanford. They would have done it here. They would have done it there. But it, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. That don't mean you can't do that. There's 4,200 peer review academic studies locked up in the ivory towers every day that we know nothing about. And so when people say, show me a peer review and I'm not going to believe you, you say, well, there's 4,200 peer review academic studies locked up every day. And also for Springer and Wiley's for free. They get the copyrights. And they can sell it. Even though your university produced it, they can sell it and make monitor, monitorize it. And they can sue you if you try to get a physical copy of it. They'd have. Look what they've done in Aaron Swartz, right? Uh, I know I probably never even answered your question. That'll teach you. Uh, Sergeant York says, I bet you couldn't get one of them in NRC at the site, no. Sylvia Missing Sky was taught in the Missing Sky. Okay, Mickey. Hi, Mickey. CNN? CNN? I mean, CNN. Has a video showing Unit 4 today and saying the process has begun to remove this. Yeah, you say bullshit. That's some pretty strong words. Sure you don't want to apologize to CNN right now, mister? Nah, no, kidding you. Well, CNN, right, uh, showing that is... Um, well, come hang on. Time to get dirty. Time to bell and... You'll see a little A. That's because I don't have a picture in A. And... Hey, like that party one. That's Unit 4 according to CNN, look. Mickey, look familiar. Well, that's what it actually looks like. That's the original footage. And so how did Molly May get in there and pull that off, right? And not only that, that there's rods all over that building. The, the whole building is structurally, you can't get in there. You won't see anybody in their work, and you're not going to see any pictures of people with cutting torches, cutting all the metal off the building and stuff like that. Right, you're not. That's what you're gonna see. See, they put a they put a they put a roof on that, and then they said everything is fine. Go back to sleep and shut up. Uh, but there's nothing in there. Is the problem? Wait, no, let's see if we can get another picture. The computer to cut it out. I have a little bit of a conniption there. Okay, hang on. I almost got it. Well, see that pretty building? That's not real, see? Right? That's fake shit. Because inside of that is utter destruction and utter chaos. Right? There's no pools. I don't need anybody to tell me there's no pools there. Right? Once you look at the picture, and that's why they got those Kevlar and those buildings are just dropping these big panels in there and they hook on. Right? Like magnets. And they can't get in there with bolts and stuff like that and bolt it on. And so they built that over there. They'll catch the fumes. And then they'll try to deal with that with control releases or whatever. So that's better than those fumes pumping up into the environment. So that's a win. But we got a thousand days of those that crosses the ocean in three days. And I got links below my video for uh, to break that down for people so they can actually wrap their mind around it. Because like you won't see pictures of anybody in there removing that and cutting it and building scaffolds and ladder trucks and everything else and they're working on that because it'll kill you if you get close to it it'll drop you so you can't get into building four see right cause building four went boom boom two right and that's building three and building one and they're right alongside of building four so they hammered building four um they hammered building four with these big bundles of 80 rods and they were going at supersonic speeds, and so as they hit building four, 
all the zirconium was burning off and released all that fumes inside of those buildings because those buildings had panels that were designed to come off in a hydrogen explosion, but we've never seen a hydrogen explosion before at a nuclear power plant. And what you're looking at is the only time in history we have seen uh, that kind of footage or verify actually happened at Because they've been up to badness for a long, long time. We're up to 59 minutes, and I got kicked off. Uh, and so I'll give it to this, what I'm doing here right now, and say hi to people before I give it up. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, 59 minutes. I got kicked off. It's okay. We're finished up here. So I'll say hi to everybody. The Real Night Rider. And I'll come in after, folks, and catch all the comments. Hi, Elizabeth. I probably didn't get your comment as well as I could have, I guess, but I don't know what to say uh, because we really, truly do need every university on this planet working on that immediately, which I advocate every night, obviously, you know, if you're here, and a lot of you folks certainly are. Okay, Jester, Elizabeth, Janet. I'll catch Janet's comment because I never got one from Janet for a bit. Good night, checks, and everyone stay safe. That's not the one. <laughs> It'll probably do it all. Okay, good night, Sylvia. Checks and balances. Yeah, and Freelance says now it's covered with a big black Kevlar turf. We suddenly have images of pretty facilities with nice cranes and workers removing fuel rods all of a sudden. But we all understand that's the nonsense. That's not possible. You can't get in there. You can't pay somebody to go in there because they can't get out to cash their check and nobody can get in to get their body. And Jester, uh, Mickey, uh, bottom line is, Sylvia, we're in a lot of shit, as you know, everybody else knows, and that we have to get rocking. Okay, Albert, thank you. Third watch, thank you. Fish fan, troop burn, troop, troop bomb. That's cute, man. Good, good name. Uh, cucumber, camshaft. Thank you. Nuber Magic, you bet, buddy. And folks, Nuber Magic's on the below. There's a whole bunch down there. Miss Milky Clown, Rad Chick. We got uh, Kevin Blanche, Thomas Ackerman. Uh, if you want to have a uh, museum showing in your community of uh, really cool artwork about Fukushima. They'll send you a really good uh, package. Go and visit the links below. Freelance, thank you. Christopher, Mark, thank you. I seen your comments earlier tonight. Thank you again. Yeah, Elizabeth, thank you, folks. Sylvia, Janet, Jester, Robert, uh, Aviator, Robert, Lunar, Jerry, Cucumber, Ketzer, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Char, getting a few more of you before I give it up. Hi, Nick. Nuke, Nuke Born. I never got yours. I'll read it after. Yeah, we don't care about number four for sure. But, I mean, that's the that's the disgu disguise. I started disguising all this, and they're going to pretend in a couple of years that it's all over with. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, I'll make sure I'll see if there's anybody odd standing out. Oh, we got Starlight there. I forgot to say hi to. Uh, never say enough to Nuber Magic. We... We so appreciate everything you've done and continue to do. Uh, let me see if there's anybody else here I can mention pops up. I'll come up to the top in a second and say hi to anybody that showed up. Corey, the real night writer, Ketzer Kays, Dwayne Campbell, I think that's pretty well it. Mickey Smith, John Kirk, Sergeant York, Doug A, once again, Jester Albert, Char, Aviator, folks, great night. Hour and three minutes. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. We'll find somebody else to pick on. At the same time, as we beat up on those smart little short people who are ruining our fucking planet. And we're not happy. Take care.